Hello there, Arya here, Pop Pop here, and I'm back with yet another cursed story for you. So I've tried my luck looking into different cursed media. I've exposed myself, uh, not literally, to uh, all of these cursed art, media, and uh, I've invited those curses upon me. And I figured, you know what, it's 2022. <laughs> Let's just, let's just, let's get, let's add some more curses on, baby. Let's just do it. So today I am not only going to tell you the story behind a supposedly cursed movie named Atuk, but I'm also going to shoot a scene from the film, the very same film that supposedly has been linked to up to seven, if not more deaths. Obviously for length, we couldn't film and show you the, you know, whole movie. However, I'm not cheating. I will still happily invite this curse onto me. And in order to do that, I will perform a live reading of the entire script beckoning this curse onto me live on Twitch next Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific. And I hope to see all you cheeky criminals there in the chat, maybe lighting some sage to ward off the curse. Because who knows? By the end of it, I could be out cold permanently. Who knows? Now, one very important thing that I want to note is that this film actually revolves around an Inuit fisherman. And I am obviously not Inuit. However, I was able to conduct an interview with an Inuit to give me a little bit more cultural context surrounding this role, and you'll hear from him later in this video. The only reason why he's not cast in this film, in this role, is because not only does he live very far away, but I also didn't want to accidentally, you know, curse and kill this man, because uh, that probably wouldn't look, you know, too good legally. But for now, let's dive into the story behind this cursed film. In 1988, stand-up comedian San Kinison was at the top of his game. Known for his loud, ranting and raving style of comedy, he'd start branching out into solo comedy specials and even acting in movies. After his role in Rodney Dangerfield's Back to School, Kinison had been asked to sign on as the lead role in a movie written by Todd Carroll, simply titled Atuk. It was based on the incomparable Atuk, a 1963 satirical novel by Mordecai Richler about an Inuit man who was experiencing his first time outside of his home on Baffin Island. The titular character would find himself in a series of hilarious predicaments overcast by money and corruption after a relocation from Alaska to New York, rather than the original story's setting in Toronto. But it wasn't enough for Kinnison. Rumor has it he demanded an entire rewrite of the script and then refused to play the role, supposedly walking off set after the first day of filming. Some movies, it seems, are just cursed to die in production limbo. United Artists, the production company overseeing the project, sued Kinnison for $5.6 million for money lost on the project and punitive damages. He was found responsible for not meeting his obligations, and the resulting debt reportedly left him destitute. Well, yeah, fuck me. If I lost $5.6 million, I'd be past the point of destitute. And for those who believe this script is cursed, it also led to his death only four years later. On April 10th, 1992, Sam Kinison and his new wife of only six days were driving home on a Nevada highway just after their honeymoon when a pickup truck struck them head on. The 17-year-old truck driver veered over the double yellow lines while traveling at a high speed, killing 38-year-old Kinnison and putting his 27-year-old wife in the hospital with a serious concussion. This fatal connection to the Atuk script was not even the first death associated with the project. Comedy legend John Belushi had supposedly been the first person considered for the role of Atuk, though he had never officially signed on for the role. Unfortunately, this consideration hardly got a chance to blossom into any possibilities. After simply being in possession of the script and reading it, Belushi died before even committing to the job. Some say he'd expressed interest in the role, but had never made it to signing a contract. Unfortunately, Belushi checked in one final time to bungalow number three at the Chateau Marmont Hotel in Los Angeles and never checked out. He died in the early hours of March 5th, 1982 of a heroin and cocaine overdose. He was 33. Though the star had struggled with substance abuse throughout his life, his death did still carry some mystery. Heroin had never been his drug of choice, and it had been provided and administered by someone else. Now that seems like its own video, so I'm gonna jot that down. His life and death would impact future actors and comedians to come, some of whom would later find themselves on this very project. By 1992, Two actors who had been considered for Carol's script had died young, but the project pushed on, hoping to see Atuk finally come to life with the next actor in consideration for the lead role, John Candy. 
Known for his work on Second City TV and movies like Uncle Buck, Candy was an experienced comedian with the resume needed to take on the role. Not only a great comedian, phenomenal actor. Planes, trains, and automobiles, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh! Hits me in the heart. It hits me in uh, the heart. Ducky Ducky. Ducky Ducky. Ducky Ducky Literature Club. Just started playing it. In 1994, Candy was reviewing the Atex script in preparation to sign on while in Mexico, filming Wagons East, which would end up being his final film ever. Candy dealt with heart disease and according to his son Chris, had trainers and would work at whatever the new diet was. I know he did his best. Unfortunately, despite his efforts, Candy succumbed to a fatal heart attack on March 4th, 1994 at the age of 43. Eerily, his passing came only one day short of the 12-year anniversary of John Belushi's own untimely passing. As far as we know, there was only one final attempt to cast the leading role and move forward with Atuk. In 1997, SNL powerhouse and actor Chris Farley was sent the script and was reportedly being considered for the film. Famous for his work in countless funny movies like Tommy Boy, he by no means was the first actor considered, but he had an incredible amount of experience. He even shared the script with fellow SNL alum Phil Hartman discussing the possibility. Much like Candy before him, this opportunity did not get to develop much further. Farley, who idolized Belushi and many of the other great comedy legends before him, succumbed to a similar fate as his idol. On December 18, 1997, Farley died of a cocaine overdose in his apartment in Chicago. Like John Belushi, he was only 33 years old. Though that was the final attempt of casting Atuk for the big screen, it wasn't the final death. Hartman, the colleague Farley had supposedly shared the script with, died only six months later. Though he was the least connected to the script, his death was the most gruesome. Phil Hartman was the victim of an apparent murder-suicide at the hands of his wife on May 28, 1998. Police responded to a report of gunshots at the Hartman residence in Encino, California. When they arrived on the scene, the couple's nine-year-old son was found fleeing from the home. The officers went in to find and rescue the couple's surviving six-year-old daughter. During this process, another shot was heard, and police returned to find both Phil and Bryn Hartman dead in their bedroom, with Phil's body showing it had begun the process of decay a few hours before Bryn's. Phil and Bryn were 49 and 41 years old, respectively. The Phil Hartman murder-suicide always uh, gets me. I, I, it's, just, it's, just so, it's just so dark, especially when you go into the details of it all. You know, that's its own video. But yeah, it's that's definitely the most gruesome of the deaths. I love Phil Hartman. Jingle all the way, people. Not only that, but uh, Phil Hartman also played uh, the best Simpsons character, Lionel Hutz, attorney at law. Six people who were directly or indirectly related to the Atuk script have died, all under the age of 50, all between the years of 1982 and 1997. Is that enough to consider a script cursed? Plenty of people seem to think so. Someone who doesn't, however, is the screenwriter, Todd Carroll. When asked about the supposed curse in 1999, Carroll said, no matter what anybody's impression was, I think it's either coincidence or practical explanation. Carol later said that, I'm not a superstitious person and it doesn't have any meaning to me. But do these superstitions have any meaning to you?